prepare our hearts as we enter to worship on this morning. Come on, can we glorify the Lord and honor him in all of his majesty? Hallelujah, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, come on, can we open our mouths and bless the name of our Father this morning? Awesome God, you are a way maker, you have always been, and we come to glorify you. For there is no one greater than you anywhere, God. And so we humble ourselves in your divine presence. And we welcome you to this sanctuary on this morning. Hallelujah, God. We bless you for who you are. We thank you for being Abba. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you for being our keeper, our way maker. The one that answers every prayer that we pray. God, we thank you for being consistent with us, God. Consistent with your love towards us, Lord. Hallelujah. So we welcome you into this sanctuary on this morning. Hallelujah. We say move in the room the way you desire to move. We ask, oh God, that you will wipe away the sins of our lives, God. That we may be found worthy to lift up holy hands in your sanctuary, in your house on this morning. And all that we do and say, Father, we do it from a heart of sincerity, God. We do it from a humble state in our lives, Lord. Because you are a great God who is deserving of pure worship and praise and adoration from our lips on this morning. Come on, right where you are, can you bless the name of the Lord this morning? Can you let him know how amazing he is? Can you thank him for all that he has already done for you and your expectations of him? Can you just let him know that you're excited about where he's getting ready to take you? You're excited about what he's getting ready to speak to you today? You're excited about what, he, what door he's getting ready to open for you? Come on, can we bless him right where you are, even in the privacy of your own? Can you just lift your hands and worship him? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we welcome you into this sanctuary. Send your glory even now, God. Send your glory now to rest in our homes, to rest in our cars, to rest in our ministries, to rest in our minds today. In the name of Jesus, for we come to glorify you. Hallelujah, with our hands lifted up and our mouths filled with praise. We come to glorify you with uplifted minds, oh God. We come to exalt your great name. For who is like our God? Nobody, nowhere. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of every hand clap. He is worthy of every song you sing. God, you are amazing. You are an amazing king. Hallelujah, for I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for prayer. We thank you that we are the righteous, and we are called according to your purpose. In the name of Jesus, you've given us the authority to open our mouths and to make your name great in the earth. Wherever we go, you are with us. Whatever we're going through, you are with us. For you said in your word that you would never leave us, neither will you forsake us. And God, we trust in your word. We trust in your word. We just stand on your word. Your word is our daily bread. And we glorify you this morning. Come on, right where you are. Adore the Lord. Sunday, even now in the name of Jesus, that even as we stand under pressure, pressure would never be able to stand on us. God, we thank you that we are strong and mighty. What we're weak and torn down, it is you that builds us up on every side. It is you that governs our every thought capacity. God, we, it is you that strengthens and strengthens us to do your will, God. And we bless your great and holy name. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. I can't tell you how good he's been to you. But I 
deserving of your blessings, Father yes, God, but you just bless us anyway. Yes. And I, we just wanted to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father God, I just thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank, you, thank you for being a father, Father yes, God. Thank you, Father God, thank you for never leaving us, Father yes, God. Thank you for never forsaking us, Father God. Thank you for never leaving us, Father God. Thank you for never forsaking us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
It's so wonderful that the Bible declares unto us just how vast he is. Yeah, yes. When we talk about comparison, the Bible says that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Yeah. His ways are not our ways. As far as the heavens is from the earth. So much farther and higher are his ways and his thoughts than ours. It amazes me that we're living in a day and a time now where people take God for granted. Yes, yes, yes. My Lord. We realize that we need a Savior. Yes, yes. And yet when he saves us, for whatever apparent reason, we put him on the shelf. We close him out of our minds, we close them out of our decisions, we close them out of our relationships, and in today's church, we've closed them out of the church. Yeah. It's no longer his will, it's our will. My, my. It's what we will to do, it's what we desire to do. And yet he sits in a distance but yet close to those who fear him. Waiting for re-entry. Yes. But the word declares unto us, they that call upon the name of the Lord yes. shall be saved. Yes. He's looking for us to call him again. Yes. We need a visitation of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Go with me to Jeremiah, the first chapter. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful this morning, music ministry. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Jeremiah 1, we want to pick up at verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Behold, I formed you in the womb. Yes. I knew you yes. before you were born. I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am but a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you. Yes. To deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Yes. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. See, I have this day sent you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down but when destruction is over I want you to build and I want you to 
play it. Yes. Father, how we bless you for this day, this time, yes, this hour, Lord. this moment. Yes, Lord. And which you have given unto us, O oh God, to meet you here. Yes, to worship you in the beauty of holiness. To kiss your very presence. Yes. To be touched by you. Filled and warmed by your spirit, covered under the blood of yes, Jesus. Yes, yes. To be ordained for this hour to hear your counsel. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now moved by your spirit, O oh God, as we have availed ourselves to you, totally opening ourselves to you, that nothing would hinder your word. Nothing will distract us. Yes, nothing. But that we're here and open for your pouring. Yes, Lord. Fill us up. Yes, fill us up, Lord. Until we overflow. Fill us up, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. We tell you that we love you. We honor you. Yes. And we bless you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' great name. Amen. Amen. Take your seats with a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we want to talk from a subject titled The Weight of Giftedness. Mama. The Weight yeah. of Giftedness. So oftentimes we are eager to be touched by God. Mm -hmm. We're eager to be used by God. To have God's approval. To be touched by God in such a manner that it is evident and obvious. Not only to others, but it is apparent to you. There is something on your life mm -hmm. that is different from your peers. It's always a joy to know that God is near you. Oh, yes. It's always a joy to know that he hears you. Yes. Not just when you're broken and you're contrite in spirit, but every day when you wake up and you can pray and you can hear God's response yes. and you met with fellowship, you met with God's approval of you, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. But yet there comes a time in our lives after we have desired the hand of God on our lives, that God touches us and he empowers us he endows us with his spirit and giftings and anointings and talents that we're faced with some things in life that we didn't know came with the territory. Amen. Amen. And it causes us to question God, question the call, question the gift, mm. question our ability. And in that time, God has to remind us mm -hmm. of who we are and what he has called us to do. Yeah. Such as Jeremiah, when he says to Jeremiah, he says, listen, before you were born, <laughs> I knew you. Which speaks to the purpose that God will never create anything without use for it. Yes. Which means that God's not wasteful. Yes. Jeremiah had a purpose for you before you were even born. I called you a prophet before you knew the definition of a prophet. 
I ordained you prophet in your mother's womb before your mother even knew that I would use you. Yeah. And here Jeremiah says to God, I'm too young for that. Mm -hmm. I'm too young to stand and declare your word. And God says to him, do not say that I am too young. He says, because Jeremiah, it's already been written. Yes. It's already been ordained. And before God takes a thing back, he'll add more to it. So when God decrees and he establishes a thing, it must be fulfilled. Yes. And it is the fulfillment of that thing that really causes dis-ease sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to those of us who are spiritual and know the power of words, we understand that dis-ease sometimes can lead to disease. disease. That's right, that's right. That's why we shouldn't have agony. That's why we shouldn't carry torture. That's why we shouldn't carry things that's too heavy because it begins to transfer out of the physical into the spiritual and we carry this stuff in our bodies and it causes sickness. That's why the Bible says lay aside every sin yes. and every weight that so easily causes us to not do the will of God. He says lay it aside. But there is a weight that comes with giftedness. There is a weight that comes with the glory of God because the glory of God means kabod, it means weight. Yes. That when the glory of God is on your life, Lord have mercy, it's heavy. It's heavy, that's right. That's why you can't live the way you want to live and, yes. and the weight of God be on you, your life, the glory of God, because the weight of God can kill you. Absolutely. That you can be in the will of God and God can tell you not to do a thing. Thank God for grace. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there's a young prophet in the Old Bible, in the Old Testament, rather, uh, that God sends to Jeroboam. And he tells uh, the young prophet to go and prophesy against the altar of Jeroboam. And the Bible says that God tells the young prophet, he says, what? Ever when you go into the city, he says, do not take that root back out of the city. Uh -huh. He says, go into the city, do what I told you to do, go out of the city, go to nobody's house, eat at nobody's house. He says, don't talk to anybody, just go and do what I called you to do. Yeah. And he did just that. He prophesies against the altar of Jeroboam. And the Bible says, Jeroboam reaches forth his hand and his arm to do what? To try and seize the young man. Uh -huh. And it dried up with leprosy. Yes. And the Bible says that he asked, he beseeched, he besought yeah. the prophet to pray to God. And the Bible says that the prophet prays to God. And when he prays to God, watch this, the Bible says the leprosy draw, dried up and he retrieved his arm. Yeah. It retracted back. Yeah. A miracle wow. right wow. there in his face. But yet it didn't change Thank the you. heart of Jeroboam. My Lord, Jesus. As the young man is walking out of the city, the Bible says there is an old prophet who is a false prophet, who is a disobedient prophet, who turned against God's will. His son sees the young prophet walking out of the city and seeing all that he did. He runs back to his father. He tells him all that the young prophet did. And the Bible says that his father sees the young prophet on the road leaving the city. He goes to the young prophet and says, the Lord has said, hmm. I don't mess with too many people. Who talk about what the Lord has said. Mm. I take them carefully with a grain of salt. The Lord said. Do you understand that the more you throw that around, mm. the more danger you are in when you say the Lord said. Mm. During the time of Jeremiah's uh, day of prophecy, uh, God had to say this to Jeremiah. He says, these people keep saying that the Lord has said, he says, and I have not even spoken. That's right. It got so bad that the people used to start coming to the prophets and said, what is the burden of the Lord? Hmm. 
that God had to tell Jeremiah, he says, tell the people, say no more, ask no more, what is the burden of the Lord? The burden of the Lord, what is the word of the Lord? What is the Lord saying? And that's what people say today. What you hear the Lord say, I don't hear him saying nothing. You're not going to force me to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you hear the Lord saying about me? Read your Bible. If you want to hear the word of the Lord, yeah. it's in the will of the Lord. That's right. If you want to know the will of the Lord, it's in the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What is the Lord saying? And people today running rapid with the Lord saying. It gets me when people said the Lord sent me here, and then all of a sudden the Lord done took you out. Hmm. Your God changed his mind too much. The Lord told me my time is up here. The Lord told me to do this and the Lord told me to do that. And, and, and watch this, as a, as, as a person who is in the will of God, you cannot fight against what they say the Lord said. Right, <laughs> right. You just got to let the Lord say what he say and go on about your business. That's right. The Lord has said, come back to my house and eat. And he goes back to the young man, to the old prophet's house. And the Bible says, while he is sitting there eating, God uses the false prophet and tells him, you will leave here and while you are on the road, listen to the instruction. A lion will kill you. Watch this. He will not annihilate you to the degree that he will eat you. He will kill you. In other words, God is going to use the lion as his instrument of judgment against you. And then the Bible says, as he's walking out of the city, watch this, he finishes his meal, he walks out of the city, watch this, the lion kills the young prophet, watch this, and sits right by his body to guard it. And the old prophet did what? Came and picked him up and buried him. How can we hear from God on one hand and on another hand totally not hear his voice. I know when people are talking to me, talking about the Lord, saying, no, no, that don't sound right. Right, right, right. And if people come to me and say, the Lord said, and I don't feel it, right. I'm not necessarily questioning it, but in that moment, watch this, I'm like Jacob. When Joseph comes to him, and tells him his dream, watch this, Joseph can, Jacob can argue it, but the Bible says he kept it in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And eventually it was fulfilled. The dream that his son had. So what you gotta understand that when people start coming, you start talking about what the Lord said, you gotta be careful. Sure. Because it's heavy mm -hmm. to bear the burdens of your own doing mm -hmm. when you know God has not done something or said something and you around here talking about this is the burden of the Lord. I, I'm careful about when the Lord said, the, when I say the Lord said. Yeah. Got to be careful about that. Yeah. Jeremiah names, means, watch this, the Lord will exalt or the Lord exalts. Mm -hmm. The Lord will establish. Think about that. Somebody like you coming out of your family, looking at your lineage and your pedigree, they ask the question, what good could come out of Nazareth? Not understanding when you try to judge somebody according to their previous conditions, or you try to judge somebody according to their environments, according to their background, you don't understand that those people are worthy for the using of God. This is why Martin Luther King said, you shouldn't judge a man, watch this, by the cover. You shouldn't judge the book by the cover, but by the content of its character. Right. Amen. That you don't know what's in the book until you open the book up and you read it. Yes. Right. Yes. And so here's the thing that we're faced with today. People who are gifted and people who are under the weight of their giftedness. Mm-hmm and don't know how to handle it and shift and adjust what's on their life. 
You can very well easily, listen to me, you can very well easily say yes to God today and tomorrow be running away from him. Amen. Amen. Your yes will always entice the devil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every time you say yes to God, watch this, you turn the devil on. Mm -hmm. He's intrigued with your yes. Does not Job trust you for this? Come on now. Remove the hedge. Wait a minute, say, how do you know it was a hedge there? Because I tried it. I've already been there. Why are you asking me how I consider your good and faithful servant? Move the hedge because I feel like the only reason that Job is trusting you is because you've given him everything. I feel like the only reason these people keep coming to church, God, because you keep blessing them. I feel like the only reason these people keep showing up, watch this, is because they still got their health and strength. But touch their strength, touch their health, Come touch their now. money, touch their marriage, touch their children, touch their job, touch their mind, touch what's going on in them Sir. and see how faithful they'll be. That's right. That's right. I've seen it one too yes, many sir. times. Do you trust him for this? Or do you trust him because of who he is? The songwriter said, because of who you are, I give you glory. Yes, yes. Because of who you are, I will lift my hands and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Yes, Lord. If I'm just worshiping God because of who or uh, what he's done, then guess what? That's not much. That's not worth anything. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we'll suffer, watch this, because we're God's children. Mm -hmm. But he says that if we suffer for our own wrongdoing, he says, what reward is that? Mm -hmm. But when you suffer as a child of God, that's a weight that you carry that the world cannot carry. Yes, sir. True. Because if we reign with him, we're going to suffer with him. If we suffer with him, we're going to reign with him. Absolutely. You can't look at reigning without suffering. That's right. Come on now. And everybody want to talk about, well, you know, I'm living for God and I'm trying to do the best I can and they keep doing this. Do you not know that Jesus said, you're going to be hated for my name sake alone? Yes, sir. Jesus says that they will judge you and kill you and think that they are doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. Come on. We know that to be true when we look at the life of Saul. Mm -hmm. Before God changed his life, he was a religious man on the road of Damascus taking people to be killed and punished. Yeah. Don't you know you can literally think you're doing the will of God and not even know God? That's why Jesus says in the last day, men are going to say, Lord, I did what? I prophesied in your name. I did this. Jesus, I never knew you. I often talk about people talking about doing the, the will of God, and they don't even know the God of the will. The weight of giftedness. The weight of doing what you do. The weight of, 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 of walking in what you walk in. The weight of it. How would God touch somebody at an early age and call them and for the rest of their life they got to totally give themselves to God. They can't enjoy this. They can't touch this. They can't go and, and experience this and experience that while everybody in the world watches look like they having fun and they living it up and here you are on the island of Patmos all by yourself. What we never think about is the fact that God chose us early, watch this, to deliver us from the destruction to come. Yes, sir. Thank you, to set us up on a mountain and to cry loud and to spell out Thank and to Lord. tell people that there is a risen Savior and that he is on his way back. And behold, he is coming quickly and, and his reward is with him and he will yes. give to every man according to his word. But no, we don't want to hear that. We just want to hear God's about to bless you. God's about to blow you up. God's about to give you a brand new wife. A brand new wife. What happened to the wife you just had? God's about to do <laughs> this. or God's about to give you a husband. Amen. God's about to do this. God's about to do that. And watch this. You ain't got to do nothing because God's about to do everything. 
thing. Mm -mm. My, my. That's what we want to hear today. That's why when you look at anointed and very gifted people in the Bible, they're far, they're few, and they're in between, and they're not in every generation. Right. That's true. That a whole generation hush. Hmm. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Have your way, God. Have your way, God. All right. It's all right, sir.
the church, you got to be strong in these last days. You might think I'm strong, but this past, this past week, I've cried so much. I laid in my white lap crying. I was ready to give up. The pressure of the work, it was on me. The last message that I had was last Thursday with Brother Elijah. He said, hey, you handle pressure. And, 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 I, and I got to thinking to myself, I was ready to give up. I said, God, man, I ain't going to deal with these people. I don't even want to deal with myself. I was ready to throw in the towel, walk away from God. I said, I'm better out in the streets. I was Jesus. better in the streets than I was on your side, God. Jesus. I was ready to give up. I wanted to call this brother, but I was hurting so bad in the inside. I couldn't call him. I couldn't let him know that, man, I was weak. <laughs> ready to throw the towel in. Jesus. Jesus. Ready to forsake God. Jesus. Ready to forsake Christ. But I had to think about all that God has done for me. How far that he's brought me. Yay. I was ready to go back to drinking. Y'all ain't Jesus. talking to me. Come on now. I was ready to go back and kick with my own partners that now. I walked away from. Come on now. I was ready to go back to the old organizations that I had walked away from. That I told God I wouldn't do it no more. I told God I wouldn't cheat no more. Come I told now. God I wouldn't lie no more. Now, I was now, ready now. to go back to all those things. The devil was like, a, like the serpent wrapping around me. He was squeezing everything out of me. It took everything in me to get up this morning. I've been up since early this morning. And I, I, I haven't even read my vow. Y'all ain't talking to me. I haven't even prayed. And, and, but I've been thinking, I was driving there and I said, God, I know I ain't prayed to you. I know I ain't read your word. But I've been talking to you silently. I know you heard me because it said you know our hearts. Yes, 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 yes. And we need God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Because he said, the, like Bishop said, the whole world is doing in and everything. Yeah. They saying everything is okay. They saying we ain't gotta live this way. We ain't got to be holy. We ain't got to give God all all our heart. We can hold on to some. You can go to the club and still come to church and dance. They ain't telling you the truth. Come on, my Lord. I was ready to give up. When I say ready to give up, I was ready to go back into the world and do any and everything I wanted to do. I was ready to leave my wife and kids. Y'all ain't hearing me. Okay. I've been contemplating divorce oh, for two, three weeks. Jesus. The devil saying you ain't got to do it. Jesus. Your daddy didn't stay. Why you staying? I wanted to walk away from him. Mm. My son graduated. I wanted to give up on him. Jesus. I wanted to leave my wife and go find me another. Jesus. Y'all ain't talking to me. Jesus. I was ready to throw it all away. Yes, come on, sir. Good. But God said he didn't draw back for me. I have no pleasure in him. I just want to tell you, you got to be strong with these last and even days. The devil is so busy. He's so persuasive. His thoughts will become your thoughts if you listen to him long enough. That's why the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon me shall be saved. You got to cry out to God. Sometimes we weak, but men cry, but nobody hears us. Who hears a man when he cries? Because a man will never cry out to anybody. We got to hold everything inside. You never hear us say anything. You never see us cry. Because we talk to be strong through everything. But then why the Bible said, lay aside every weight. Some everything got to sin, but sometimes that weight will produce you and cause you to go back to sin. Yes, sir. But you got to let that weight go. Yes. I had to let it go. My wife's hearing this for the first time. Thank you, Lord. You see, you understand? I'm sitting in silence, in darkness in my heart. Mm. Y'all ain't feeling it. I got you, brother. We hear you. But I, but I understood something. I said, God, I, I, let somebody else do it. Mm. He said, no, not you. He said, not you. I was reading the Tim. He said, from, from your child, you have known the what? Holy Scriptures. Yes. And then he came with Jeremiah. I said, but I knew he before you was formed in your mother's womb. Yeah. I said, no, I can't give up. I was at work. Ready to give up. Don't you know suicide has been on my mind? Y'all ain't talking to me. I, got you, I was ready to give up everything. Yeah. Everything that I don't work hard to do, that I allowed God to help me when I was ready to give it up. I said, let somebody else do that. 
I'm better off on this side. Matter of fact, I was better off on this side. On that side, I didn't have to worry about money. On this side, I didn't have to worry about who liked me or didn't. Because everybody was riding with me because I was doing wrong. This the Bible said the world love is on. Yeah. 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 work, man. And this girl, she came, she, I had to train her. And I said, God, I don't want to do this no more. He said, no, you got to do this. The girl, boyfriend, kicked in her door, killed the new boyfriend in front of her. She was getting ready to shoot her, but the gun kept jamming. I kept saying, I said, I'm training this girl. She couldn't focus. She was just nervous wreck, and I kept saying, what's wrong with her? Her cousin came around, and he said, she said, she said, she just witnessed a boyfriend get killed. We just not getting her to come out the house to come to work because she been scared. Don't you know the police ain't even locked this dude up? The dude that was trying to kill her, he married. Yeah. And got married again. She don't know when he might snap and come at her again. And I said, well, God, maybe this is the reason. He said, this is the reason why I need you. Yeah. I had to pull her to the side because she started breaking down and just crying. I mean, I ain't never seen a woman like this. I seen fear and fear all over her. But I had to let her know that the reason the gun didn't jam because it wasn't your time. The reason the gun jammed because it wasn't your time. The reason you are here because God wants you here. It was for this very moment I prayed with that woman. Prayed over her life, over protection. God said, that's the very reason why you can't quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I let everybody know. You got to hold up, brother. You got to be strong. Yeah. God know we get weak. God know we get tired. Elijah got tired, didn't he? He said, sit down, you're going to eat because you're going to go on what? A 40 days journey. Yeah. So in, in the process of living for God, everybody want to do this. This is not easy. This is pressure in his way. How you going? I'm going to tell you, Jesus let you know it wasn't easy. He got ready to go to the cross. He went to the consumer of God. He had to pray. He said, Father, let this cup what? Pass from me. See, y'all see men and y'all say when we get weak, he ain't got God with him. No, Jesus got weak in the flesh too. Yeah. It's that what he did. He said the angels yeah. came and did what? Ministered unto him. Yeah. This is a serious thing. Yeah. But people think it's easy. You know why it ain't easy? Because your life is on the line. Yeah. Your life, your soul is valuable. That's why the devil wanted so much. Mm. Your life is more valuable to God. That's yeah. why the devil wanted to take it so much. Yeah. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. He said, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan has come down having what? Great wrath. Yes, he is our biggest enemy. That's why the scripture said you wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Yeah. You got to know who you wrestle with. Yeah. Yeah. God to God be the glory. Yes. Be strong. Be strong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be strong in the Lord. Yes, sir. God loves you. Yes, God see everything you're doing. He see every burden. Yes, He's every living. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's in debt. And when I talk, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about yes. sin. Yes. For the Bible said the wages of sin is death. Yes. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our yes. Lord. Yes. If you are in debt, God has paid the whole debt for you. Yes. The only way to get out of debt is to get to Jesus. Yes. The only way I was able to get out of the debt that I was just in, I had to acknowledge Jesus. Yes. The only way I'm able to get this burden off my back, I got to acknowledge Jesus. Yes. For it said, whom the Son has set free, yes. set free he is indeed. Yes. We got to know who we are yes. and whose we are. The Bible said, make proof of your call. Yes. Don't let the devil bully you. Come on, sir. You have somebody that's defeated the devil. Come on, sir. Come he was bruised for your iniquity. Yeah. By his stripes, you are healed. Yeah. Not only in your body, but in your mind. Yes, Lord. You healed in your mind. Yeah. You healed in your mind. Yeah. Jesus said, will yeah. God be made whole? Yeah. He didn't talk to you just talking about his body. He was talking about his mind. Because see, you can heal the body, but the mind will return to the very thing that caused it to be sick. If you don't heal the mind. Yeah. Jesus. Restoration be strong. Jesus. The bishop lifted up in prayer. Yes. Pray for each other. Yes. Yes. Strong got to do what? And bear the firmness yes. of the week. Yes. Your preachers get sick. That's right. People say, well, they shouldn't. When you go to the hospital, the doctor catch a cold just like you. Yes. But he still got the prescription for you. Yes. The hospital is a place for sick people. Yes. The church is a place for sick people. Yes. So they can become whole. Yes. Jesus didn't come to those that were already well. He came to those that would. 
You got to understand. Miss Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to say this. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say this. I was ministering. God dropped something in my spirit, and that's where it just caused me to just go over the top and just honor Him. Gifted people, anointed people for the use of God. Are not born in every generation. There may be those who are born in every generation who have the gift of God in terms of an anointing or whatever, but for special use. Yeah. There will be generation after generation after generation after generation after generation born. And God will raise up somebody for himself. Yeah. Eli the priest. <clears throat> had two sons that succession in his house and yet God's not pleased with them because they're not doing his will Hannah has a husband that has a handmaid that has multiple sons with him all Hannah wants is a son God doesn't give her a son because she wants a son God gives her a son because he needs a priest. Yeah. Yeah. And Hannah prayed a prayer. Lord, if you give me a male child, I'll give him back to you. Yeah. All the days of his life. In the moment she prayed that prayer, God honored her prayer. In fact, the priest that was getting ready to be released and replaced. When he heard and saw that the people said that she was crazy while she was out on the altar, down on the altar praying, it was him who had to say, no, she's not drunk. She's praying out of a spirit only her lips are moving. Yeah. You see that he still, watch this, connected to God. He still understands the things of God, but yet because he did not call his sons on the carpet to do what God called them to do, he's being replaced. God took his spirit off of Saul and he put it on David. If you're going through, and you know that there have been generations and generations born before you to come this way, and now all of a sudden the hand of God is on your life and you wonder why the pressure is so heavy and why you just can't do what this preacher was saying, he wanted to go back and do. That's all that's in my notes. I didn't have to read my notes. It's all in my notes. Literally everything that he just said. Listen, listen to me. We have created a fake and phony church that we cannot. Transparency doesn't even live in the church no more. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. I saw it all over you, mm -hmm. sitting there wrestling and fighting. What we want God to do doesn't get done. It's okay. what God wants to do yes. that gets done. Yes. We want God to move a certain kind of way. We want to move a certain kind of way. But God says, no, this is what I want. This is what I need. See, God, God, God yeah. about to do something. Yes, powerful. he is. Yeah, God. God got to do something so powerful. Jesus. There ain't many churches that still hear God. There ain't many churches that can pause and let God speak when he yeah. wants to speak no Come more. On, you ought to be grateful. Yes, yes, yes. That there's an atmosphere. That's still conducive for signs and miracles. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. For the operations of God, for the presence of God. Yes. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
The reason I celebrate Brother Travis is because he did something that the old church used to do. He stood before the church with confession. Today, we are deceived by our thoughts. Like he said, you can start taking on the thoughts of the devil and then they get into you and then and you go. I applaud you, but let me say this to you also. The very strength that you praying to me, I'm praying unto you. Amen. The very things that you saying, hold on, I'm telling you to hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Sister, I'm encouraging you. Yes. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And in the power of his might. Yes, Lord. It ain't for you to go and tell nobody, whatever. Don't nobody know what y'all been going through. And don't nobody know ultimately what brought this on. He says the first time you heard it. But at the end of the day, he said something that is very critical. It's a question. That we've been asking for so long. Who's going to hear the yes. broken man? Yes. Who are we going to cry out to? Yes, 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 yes. And so he's been suffering in silence. I'm here to tell you, I've been there. I know that experience. That's why I'm not going to stay here and condemn him and convict him. My wife's standing right here with me. I know that feeling. I've been there. But it's because of the fact that I had a praying wife who stood by me no matter what I said, no matter what the devil was taking me to. I had a praying wife who stood by me. I had a God who understood my pressure. Let me tell you this. And we're going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here. Don't say yes to God if you're not ready. Thank you, Lord. With everything that comes with a yes. This is for real. You can't take this on and pull it off. In my notes, I talk about how preachers and people are all kind of denominations and non-denominations they are walking away from God in droves but if you really with God and you really have God and God really had you you can never walk away you may stray for a minute but because God is with you and you're with God yes. you ain't going nowhere thank you Lord I want you to put your hands to this couple we're going to pray with this couple thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on I just want to say one thing for the church. There ain't nothing wrong with my marriage. Come on, right. right. I said, I said, I'm dealing with Satan in the battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He brought things to my mind. Yeah. yeah. But nothing's wrong with my marriage. I love my wife. Bro, you don't yeah. have to. You don't have to explain. But I'm with you. Go ahead. And, and she's she's my strength. She's my help. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. But you have to be strong in the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes I be quiet. People say, well. He look mean, he look like he's stuck on his mind, he'll stuck on my mind. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm always in the word. Yeah. Because even when I feel like I might be hurt, this was the first time in my life ever. When I say ever, that I felt the way I felt these pain. And I've talked to her about the way I felt. And with everything that I've been through, I she's my best friend. I talk to her about everything. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time in my whole life that I felt this way. Let's pray. Put your hands this way. Father, strength for this marriage, strength for this company, yes, yes, yes. strength for this brother, strength for our Thank sister. You. Father, whatever may have come over Sister Seals, oh God, after hearing this for the first time. Father, we pray, God, a deeper and a more clearer understanding. We bind the enemy, oh God, that will try to come and put friction in this marriage, not just this marriage, but every marriage in this room and those who are viewing. We know the plans that you have for this couple, God. We know the anointing that's on their lives. We know the purpose 
for which, oh God, you called them, oh God, and even sent them to this house. We ask, oh God, that you would continue to bind them so close together, God, that they cannot fall one without the other. We thank you that it's already done in the name of Jesus. Blessings only you can, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. We're getting ready to leave. gifts in your hand. Do you need to you need to go? Listen, get your gifts in your hand. We're leaving. Brian. Thank you, Jesus. I may not get this quote correct. I recall you standing here saying something. And it's something to the extent y'all don't stop because I'm coming. I remember that. That wasn't something that you just conjured up in your mind or your heart. That was something that God placed there. Like I told you, every yes to God intrigues the enemy. It entices him. He knows where you came from. Brother just talked about it. Well, nothing over there. We was winning over there. We had to worry about nobody liking us and accepting us and so on and so forth. But over here is different. And God ordained it to be that way. I love you, man. We love you. We're looking for you to succeed and excel in the things of God. Oh, yeah. Man. So, Sade, we love you. Amen. We pray your strength. Amen. And you know God's got purpose for you. You got to start running. You've been through too much. Jesus. You've been through too much. It's just time to say, Lord, here am I. I'm ready. Not knowing my next move, not knowing how to do it. Just yeah, say God. yes. Yeah. It's not that you don't know him. You know him. Personally. He needs you like you need him. It's now or never, sister. Just say yes. That's all you have to do. Let God do in you what he desires to do in you. The time is now. The time is now. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you who are giving online, we make no apologies for the coming of our Lord and his spirit saturating this place. We, yeah. we just say yes. We say yes. Yes. Those of you who have given online, we ask that you will give to Restoration. You can give a file. You can also mail your payments in 6479 with just a road suite 115. Amen. Memphis, Tennessee 38115. You can mail your payments in. We've got some other things that we got going, but we thank you for having underwrite the vision of this house. Yeah. yeah. Amen. But the right is going to be standing for tithes and offering. So my team will be standing for pastor's love. Amen. This is what we're going to do. Right you stand over here. I'm going to tell you stand there. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pray and we're going to go out. You just bring your offering. Amen. So your tithes and offering here. So your pastor's love here as we're going out. Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you for what has yes. transpired in this place. Thank you for your very presence. Thank yes. you for the spirit of transparency. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh God, that sometimes we just got to be brutally honest. Yes. Many people don't understand it. I thank you for your touching and releasing of your spirit today. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I was 
talking about the weight of guilt to this God, and yet here I am carrying yes. weights. Yes. Yes. I know what it is you to walk under a load. Yes. Yet I have to look to the hills from which coming all my help. I realize yes. that it comes from you. Yes. Father, seal this experience, oh Thank God, the stain our conscience with this experience today. Yes, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Bless now as only you can every gift that is given on today, God, sanctified for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Lord, that none will suffer lack for what they have given, but that you will greatly increase us all according to our faith. Your word, 36 to even a hundredfold, God, as we leave this place, never, never from your presence. Yes, Lord. Go with us and be with us until we shall meet again. Jesus' name.